Greetings, Internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the Internet Lifestyle Show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real-life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends. Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. And I've got a new guest on the line. I think he's in kind of like the same business that I'm in, or same industry and stuff. And his name is Mike. How you doing, Mike? Hey, I'm doing good, Brad. Thanks for having me. Is it M? Let me turn up the volumes because there we go. There we go. Check one, two. Is it? Yeah. Is it? It's Mike with a M Y K E. Is that the real spelling right. of it, or did you do that for the internet? No, it's funny because my real name is Michael, and I started spelling my name differently in like eighth grade, I guess, just to be different, mm -hmm. and it ended up turning out to be a good thing. So yeah, uh, it wasn't for marketing or for business, but now it is that way, which is great. Oh, it was probably something that you had brewing inside of your brain, knowing where you're going for internet yeah. business kind of stuff. So, um, I don't do these real long because people have their, you know, people are, some people are still stuck in that nine to five job thing. They got businesses they got to run and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't do them too long because it takes up that valuable time. Um, but uh, basically you just get to know who you are. So your name is Mike and what's the last name? Metzger. Metzger. I, I, I knew a Metzger, Duncan Metzger. He's locally here in Minneapolis. Maybe you're related. Bunch you, of German guys. <laughs> are you married and got kids or single? Dude? I'm not married. Uh, I'm assuming I probably will be here in the next couple of years whenever we tie the knot. But I've got a wonderful girlfriend that lives here with me. And she's a nuclear engineering student that goes to the university here. Oh. And uh, we've been together for three years. That's interesting. A nuclear engineering student. What are you? Yeah. What the heck does a nuclear engineering, what is that? So they work in sustainable energy, you okay. know, and so all the different power plants and, and generating uh, electricity all over the world. Here they come. You had a meltdown. Yeah. <laughs> so I live in the city. I live in the beautiful city of Richmond, and I'm on the boulevard. Um, and we've got a nice place with a balcony that overlooks one of the most beautiful intersections in the city. But that's one of the downfalls is you never know when that's going to happen. So there's trains, there's yeah. ambulances. Fire engines, cops, all kinds of stuff. But you get used to it and kind of put it out yeah. of your mind. And everything. You noticed cool. it. I didn't even notice it. I'm so used to it. <laughs> so uh, let's move into like what it is you do, your occupation. And I, I looked a little bit. It looks like you're into the, the digital marketing or yeah. business and stuff like it's that. It's all digital marketing. Um, three years ago, I had no knowledge or experience with any of this. And I was introduced to network marketing. And had a little bit of success. I think like everybody, it's it's a very tough business to succeed in. And it's a lifelong commitment if you want to be a, a six or seven figure earner. And in the beginning, I thought that, that was going to be me. And I started to realize that it was more of like a gateway. And it was my gateway into real business. And so network marketing taught me you know, the power of positive thinking. It introduced me to amazing people. Taught me a little bit about sales and networking. And I got bit by the bug and I loved it. And then in late 2014, I was kind of pulled away from network marketing more into internet marketing and started to learn how to generate customers on a small scale for more cheaper products, you know, $100 or less and learning how to drive traffic and Facebook ads and Google ads and things like that and found a little bit of success for myself. And then I took that and applied it to real businesses. And so now today I run a digital marketing consultant, consulting agency here in Richmond. Mm -hmm. And I work with pest control businesses, HVAC companies, plumbing companies, um, even like wedding event planners, all kinds of different businesses. Oh, cool. I was in the event business. So not, not that network marketing isn't a real business, but it's definitely a different business model. I totally understand what you're saying. And uh, even, even with the whole online marketing of marketers selling marketing to other marketers, I like what you're doing because you can actually drive somebody into a pizza restaurant. Yeah, A lot absolutely. of um, internet, internet marketers can't do that. All they can do is sell somebody else up on a dream. Right. And I'm sure you've been through all that stuff too. I've kind of gone yeah. down that path yeah. and... But we learned a lot, so that we did it for a reason, I guess. Very true. <laughs> we didn't make our million dollars, but we learned something. That's true. I, I think you're not an entrepreneur if you haven't accidentally followed the wrong person. You know, because like we're so eager for good information, we want to learn stuff, and it's inevitable that you are going to have trials and tribulations where maybe you 
followed the wrong strategy or you fall into the hands of the wrong coach. And it's just part of it, you know, and mm-hmm. it, if you don't have mistakes, then you're not moving forward. You're just staying in the same place. Well, my thing with an entrepreneur is basically they just somebody that wants to be uh, self-employed and pave their own path kind of thing. They don't want to be employed by someone else, sort of be in control, you know, the Robert Kiyosaki cash flow quadrant and all that kind of stuff. And uh, um, I lost my train of thought. It just went out the window. Well, <laughs> when I started three years ago. I was completely broke. I had no experience. I didn't go to college. Parents weren't necessarily proud of me. And network marketing was that. It was like my savior, you know. I, I didn't really... It's funny because I almost feel dumb that I didn't know that there was this whole world out there of entrepreneurs and people that were, you know, close to my age. I'm 27 now. And when I first got started, I was 24. And I saw people succeeding, whether it was online or network marketing or building their own business. And it was kind of like the veil was just lifted off my face and everything slowly but surely started to change. And I think network marketing is great. And I, I kind of have that same perspective. It's a love-hate thing. It's like I love it because it was my introduction into the industry. I met amazing people, and, and I got bit by the bug. But then when you learn some of the skills such as yourself, no, and myself, you realize that there is even a better way than the better way. Um, mm-hmm. And for online business and even pizza shops, it's just it's much simpler to put your advertising in front of a market that's already looking for what you serve. Well, you must. Than to you must. New- you must know the name Eric Worre. Of course, yeah. So, yeah, he's a friend of mine from Minneapolis, now lives in Las Vegas. And um, yeah. I know for a long time he battled the whole concept of internet stuff because he said it's belly to belly, people talking to people. But guess what? You can really oh, accelerate it. And he, he's embracing it quite a bit now, too. Yes. So, yeah, it's, it's a hybrid. Let's go, bro. Yeah, it's a it's a hybrid thing that uh, people got to understand. It's not one or the other. You got to be able right. to think outside of the box or think without a box. Yeah, it's very true. Is it, I, I think you got to love sales. I think that's what it comes down to. Is you got to like selling, and if you don't like selling, no matter what you choose, it's going to be tough. Do Do you think that you can do do this without selling? Without by by maybe doing uh, creative copywriting and not have to talk to anybody? Yeah, yeah. I think um I think what it comes down to there is like price point. You know, I think all day long you can sell uh, products or digital downloads or tangible services, anything, I think like below the $500 mark. I think once you start to get up closer to a thousand bucks, most consumers want to talk to somebody. Yeah. And uh, I think you can create a funnel that that has a tripwire that eventually gets to that level and you do end up talking to them. And I think when you get something to a certain point, you don't really have to sell them on it. You just have to eliminate all the other possibilities. And eventually they go, you know what? That's the path to take. And they just yeah. do it because it's a, it really isn't a, um, a lot of people have the mindset of it's a price thing, but mm-hmm. uh, like what's more valuable, a glass of water or a hundred dollar bill? Right. Depends on if you're in the desert or not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, depends so it's, it's if, really. Uh, depends on if you value health, right? Yeah. It's the perception of the thing. Anyways. So. Is, do you have any uh, programs you're launching now? So there's really two sides to what I do. You know, I, I do stuff that isn't really open to the public, which is like my consulting business. You know, and I run my consulting business and work with businesses. But there are a lot of people that have come to me along my journey and said, hey, I see that you're doing great, but how can you help me? Or, or do you provide something? And so I, I do a lot of free information just like yourself. You know, I run a blog and try to do as much as I can as far as video streaming and stuff. And there's not always time for it, but I enjoy doing it when I can. Um, The only coaching that we do is myself and my partner, Adam Winning. We're both young six-figure earners, and we figured out all of that out in affiliate marketing. And so we've used that to kind of show people our process. And we do have a webinar where uh, we don't sell anything on the webinar. We just kind of show people the basics. And Mm -hmm. if they feel like they need more mentorship or more help, then they're able to fill out an application and hop on the phone and talk with us, just like we were just talking about. Oh, cool. See, that's very important because a lot of times a person does want to kind of learn on their own, but all of a sudden, I mean, if if you've got someone watching over your shoulder, they can say, no, 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 it's up in the right, not the left. You go, oh, my God, I've been looking for it all day. Well, there's a little bit of help for you, you know, so it's good to have someone to be able to ask those questions and reveal that kind of one of the first things I share with everybody is just get organized. I think that that's more important than figuring out how to make money is you got to organize your thought process in your life and your goals and your plan moving forward before you can figure out what that one thing is. You know, you got to be 
organized and got to be able to think straight so that way you can execute properly whenever you do find it. Yeah, my background, I started doing magic when I was a little kid, hence the Magic Brad brand. I saw on your website. I love it. And I, and I got into that, and my strategic marketing kicked in, and I produced an event that attracted event planners. So I was doing attraction marketing pre-internet. And uh, for some reason, my mind just goes off and other stuff. But you mentioned weddings. So you do some stuff yeah. with wedding planners in the events industry. Yeah, so I have a client, and what she has is like an automated photo booth. And yeah. she came to me, and she was like, I want more customers. And so you know, she rents out a piece of technology, so she doesn't even have to be there. And it's, it's like this booth that right. you stand in front of. It's like a photo booth, but it's a little more more yep. fancy. And I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about, because um, I used to produce these shows that those guys would exhibit in. So yeah. if down the road you want to consult and talk with me, I'm an op open book as far as where to target, because Meeting yeah, Professionals International, it. that's all the corporate events, and that's what I did for many, many years. I used to get a couple thousand people from Target, Medtronic, Cargill, 3M, Honeywell, and Pillsbury, General yeah. Mills. I used to get them all. Amazing. So really cool. But, it, yeah, but the, the, I was going to say something. That uh, a person like that, they don't realize that, I mean, they go to do, do all these coffee meetings and you drive across town and you drive back and, you know, you had a meeting with one or two people. They don't realize that you can do a, do your, like a BNI pitch. Mm -hmm. You can do it on video, put it on a yep. Facebook live stream and then boost that sucker out to a target market that exactly what you're looking for. Yep. And, uh, mm -hmm. and just having your, your knowledge of copywriting because it it's more than just throwing it up there and going please buy my stuff because that right. doesn't work <laughs> yeah yeah there's there's a lot to it but i think um if you can work you know hand in hand with somebody who's who's already figured out most of it or at least is on the right path that'll cut the learning curve quite a bit yeah i've uh, learned a lot that it's it's sort of an unlearning process because i've been in business all my life and i'm almost 60 so i've i mean when i was a little kid we did uh, magic shows in the neighborhood garage so I've always been in business so I'm unlearning all the things and uh, finding out that it's not about just putting it out there you need to be known liked and trusted that's part of the reason why I do these videos and going into the network marketing aspect of things I talked with Eric worry about an idea of of uh, giving somebody a probation period before they just run out there and start selling their ju ju juices and stuff if yeah. they were to hold off a little bit, get some strategy behind you before you go, hey, check out this new wonderful thing, because it turns a lot of people off, and I think it damages the network marketing industry a little bit. It does. It does. Unfortunately. Um, and, and what I went through is a perfect example of that. You know, I was in a network marketing company that now is no longer succeeding. You know, they're still open for business, I guess, but uh, I worked with this company, Vima, and learned a lot. But at the end of the day, that was what happened is the distributors themselves ruined the reputation of the company and all kinds of crazy stuff. So it, it is. It's a love-hate thing because, in my opinion, it's much easier to craft an offer and put it in front of a market that's already searching and buying a particular product versus trying to find new people, convince them to make new decisions about new products that they've never heard of or that they could go to the local store and buy. And it's just – it's it's possible. It's just a much – harder business model, I think, and well, I have a lot of respect for the people well, that succeed. A lot of these uh, MLM type businesses are starting to finally get it and because, you know, the uh, the regulations and stuff say you're you're selling, re you're recruiting recruiters and it's not right to do that. It's kind of like if you're, you know, you're going into McDonald's to buy a burger and fries and the guy tries to sell you a franchise. Yeah. I, want fr I said fries, not franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a good uh, that's a good example. So they gotta shift it up a little bit, and then, like there's some of these these network marketing companies that are actually they you can get in them for free, mm -hmm. and you can buy the product as a customer, and then if you right. wanna be a promoter, it doesn't cost you anything, and it shouldn't. I right. mean, I shouldn't have to pay to promote your brand. Right. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Let's get back to you. Well, before I ask my favorite question, and I kind of figured it out, but before I ask my favorite question, that's the big why question. Could you share how to get a hold of you in case somebody wants to hire your services? And I'm assuming you work globally and probably a little bit locally. I do. Um, it's interesting because most people start locally and then they branch out globally. And I, I did the total opposite because right. honestly, out of fear, you know, I didn't want my friends and family to think like I was a loser or like, you know, 
and it was tough because they didn't think of me as a business person, but I got started on the web and anything that I do, I run a couple different websites and blogs and all kinds of things. You can always find it through my weight, my main website, which is MikeMetzger.com. And it's M Y K E M E T Z G E R.com. Got it. Um, and you can just Google it and you'll find, you'll find me somehow. Um, and I'm all over social media, just like yourself. So do you have, uh, like, Mike.com, M Y K E.com? Don't. That would be that a good one to get. Maybe you should, maybe I, I you should do Magic good. Mike. You could do Magic Mike and start dancing. I could, yeah. <laughs> but then you wouldn't get married to that nuclear physicist. I know, I know. <laughs> I just recently learned how to dance, too. Okay. Uh, so maybe that's, maybe that's not a bad idea. <laughs> there you go. I'll market it. You got to pay in commissions. Okay, here's my favorite question. That's the big why question. Why is it you're doing this? Why didn't you end up being like a tennis pro or something like that or a ski instructor? Well, a couple of reasons. I think me personally, I was never good at keeping a job. I mean, I've probably been fired from 13 <laughs> or 14 jobs, and it's because I get in and I've always tried to do my own thing. I used to work at Walgreens as the manager of the photo department, and I would reorganize and try to set it up how I thought it was going to work best. But when you have a boss, they don't like that. Um, and I was constantly getting fired or just finding jobs that I wasn't passionate about. And I just stopped showing up. And I had somewhat of a rough childhood. And I think that I just wasn't put in a position to really understand that success was a possibility for myself. Um, my big why is that I want to create a message sharing with people that just about anybody can can do this because I work with a lot of people who you know grew up with business parents you know their parents were entrepreneurs and it was just naturally handed to them and you know they start out life with an 800 credit score and it, it works for them but that wasn't my story and my entire journey has been figuring out who am I and who do I want to be and what is my story my message that I want to share with other people that might be in a totally different situation like I was in. And I was in a, in a tough spot. I was in debt and was living in a house that was probably should have been condemned and was falling apart. And I started my first business with a little Boost Mobile slider phone and a laptop that I borrowed from my 88-year-old grandmother. And when you turned it on, it sounded like it was going to take off like a rocket ship. <laughs> and uh, I think I could probably touch the walls of my bedroom on each side. I didn't have a closet or a bathroom or anything. And my rent was a hundred bucks a month. And I used to hide from my landlord because I would hear him come around and I could smell him smoking cigarettes. And so anytime I would smell that, I would turn my TV off and turn my radio off and I would just wait until he left because I didn't have the money and I didn't know what to do. And this industry and making connections, just like connecting with you and other people, it's those little small steps that will get you out of those situations. And so that's like my real why. And I don't know how to put it into a, a small sentence, but if I can build a, a, a story and a message and become, you know, a world renowned speaker to just share that simple story, I think it would motivate a lot of people to understand that things can be bad, but the further you kind of get pulled back in life, like a slingshot, if you want it to, it'll, it'll shoot you as far as you want it to go. True. And if I can share that, that's absolutely my, my why I do this. Well, we've got some commonalities. Uh, part of my mission is to move the online chatter back into real life activity. That's why I want to do some masterminds in Costa Rica and Tulum and Bali and things like that. Get real people connected back together to be able to do what you're doing with the brick and mortar stuff and kind of get out of this uh, selling marketing to marketers because it's too ancestral right. and weird. Yeah. So Amazing. if you want to hang on, I will uh, shut this one down and we can chat a little bit after, but I'm going to beam this up to the universe and uh, see who can find it. Great. Well, thanks for having me, Brad. I really like connecting with you, and I'm excited for people to see this. Okay. Thanks, Mike. All righty. Be well. Peace.